Hi, and welcome back to part one of lesson four, level one. In this video, we'll build upon the last introductory video where we introduced you to the data and the rules that we need to implement in order to determine all of our customers' creditworthiness. Let's try to automate the process of applying those three rules. Let's create three new columns out here on the right for each of the three rules. This way, we'll be able to easily see for each customer how they do on each of those three rules. Let's just call them Rule 1, Rule 2, and Rule 3. Remembering that since we have a series of data here in Rule 1 and Rule 2 cells, we can just highlight those two cells and drag it across and Excel will automatically fill in the Rule 3 text for us in this cell. So let's start with Rule 1. If you recall, it said, the customer's past balance can't be more than 10% of this year's total sales. What does that mean up here in this data? Up here we find the customer's past due balance. This amount here can't be more than 10% of the current year's sale here in this column. So we can do a simple formula here where we can calculate 10% of the sales and then we can check to see whether or not it's less than or greater than the past due balance. Under Rule 1 here, let's start off the formula with the equal sign as always, and then click on the past due balance cell, and then type in the less than sign here, and then click on the current year's sales, and then multiply this cell by 10% or 0.1. The great thing about relational operators is that they return only one of two values, true or false, depending on whether or not this is a true statement or a false statement. If E3 is less than D3 times 0.1, then this value returns true. If it's not less than D3 times 0.1, then it will return a false. Hitting the Enter key runs the calculation, and we get an answer of true. Let's do a little sanity check here. Is 0 less than 10% of this number? Well, yes, it is. So this true makes sense. Now we can take that formula and fill it down this column. And now we see how this rule applies to each of our customers. Let's take a look here at this customer, Everything Golf, since they have a false here for rule 1. Their past due balance is almost $3,000. And their current year sales is about $9,500. So 10% of 9,500 is 950. Is 3,000 less than 950? Well, no, it's not. So this false value here makes sense. I'm a big fan of testing out my formulas. So let's just add some customer data down here and copy this formula down one more row. Let's put in some nice even numbers that are easily testable so that my feeble mind can do the necessary math without a calculator. Let's put in $100 for this current year's sales. And then put in 9 here. 10% of 100 is 10. So is 9 less than 10? Yes, it is. So this should be true, and it is. Let's put in a 9.9, .9, and it's still true. That's cool. Let's change this value to 10 and ask ourselves, is 10 less than 10? No, it's not. So the formula should return a false now. And it does, so our testing works out. I always like to test things right around the threshold of where I would expect it to change from true to false. It's always a good idea to go back over our business rules to make sure that we caught everything. If we look back at our rule number one over here, we see this sentence. This rule does not apply to new customers. Going back to our data, this rule one shows a false value for Concord Pro Shop. And we determined earlier that they're a new customer so this false is a bad thing for Concord, as it might keep them from being granted credit, and that's never a comfortable conversation to have with a potential customer. In Lesson 5 next week, we'll learn a better way of dealing with what to do if certain cells are empty, but for now, we'll just manually delete the formula from Rule 1 cell and make this cell empty. So in Rule 1, we use the less than operator. There's also a greater than operator, the equals operator, and this, a less than symbol butted up against the greater than symbol, this means a not equals to operator. This allows us to see if two cells are not equal to each other. 
Finally, we have the greater than or equal to sign along with the less than or equal to sign. Those are all the relational operators that we have in Excel, and there's a handy dandy table 4.4 on page 218 of your 2013 text that gives you examples of these. Let's move on to rule two now. This rule states that we should accept a customer that has either a composite credit appraisal value of one or a paydex score of over 90. So here's the composite credit appraisal score here in column H, and here's the paydex score here in column I. We will accept either one. If this cell equals one or this cell is greater than 90, even if one of these two situations is false and the other is true, that's good enough. That is where the word OR comes in, right? OR is a Boolean function. And go figure, there's an OR function in Excel that will return true or false. The OR function evaluates a list of Boolean values or true and false values. And if any of them are true, then the OR function will render true. Let me put some values into these cells over here to play with. False, true, and false. Now think about this in spoken English. Is this, or this, or this true? Well, yes, the answer is true because this one's true. Let me change that true to a false. If they're all false, then is this true? No. Is this true? No. Is this true? No. So the OR function renders false because none of them are true. Let's go back to our rule two cell here and start off our formula with equals, OR, and read the description here. Checks whether any of the arguments are true and returns true or false. Returns false only if all arguments are false. So we need to check our arguments here and if any of them, even just one, are true, then the OR function will return true. How this function works is we just put in our logical or true-false conditions into the OR formula and separate each one of them by a comma. Our first condition that we want to check is whether or not this composite credit appraisal H3 equals 1. So let's put that in here. Now a comma and we're ready for our next logical statement. Or is this paydex value in I3 greater than 90? If either of these conditions are true, then rule two will now evaluate to true. The only time that it will return false is if both of these conditions are false. In this case, for row three, they're both false. Four is not equal to one, and 15 is not greater than 90. So let's drag this formula down to see if we get a true result somewhere. Here we have a composite credit appraisal of three. That's not good enough. But we do see a paydex score of 94, and that part must be true. Remembering that the OR function renders true if any of the logical arguments are true, so this second logical argument causes the OR function to give us the true. That completes rule two, and that also completes this video.